Okay, so we're going to get started. Um, as I said, this is the first time we've done this. Um, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, the idea. I'll let the people who are up here in the panel introduce themselves. Um, we've got, uh, most people will recognize these, these three guys. They've all been up here at one point or another uh, talking. Uh, but let's talk about the format. Um, I'm going to be a, a little bit of a dictator for now. Uh, w this is what we're going to try this time, but we're totally open to different ways of doing this. So if you guys afterwards say, hey, you know, it would have worked better if we did it some other way, just come and tell us that. Um, but basically, we're gonna, we've got 40 minutes, uh, of which we'll spend the first 30 just doing a structured Q&A. So me interviewing the group. Um, if you have questions that are more of a clarifying questions I didn't hear or I didn't understand, you can, <coughs> you can ask that during. But otherwise, just kind of hold your questions. We will have time at the end. Uh, I say 30 minutes. I don't really know exactly how long we'll go in this kind of structured Q&A. But we'll, we'll leave some time, certainly, at the end for, for you guys to ask questions as well. Uh, hopefully that works. And without further ado, I'm going to turn the light off of Alex so he doesn't have to stare at the sun. <laughs> okay. And we're back. Um, okay, so um, we're here to talk about Ember's views versus encoders. I am going to ask the audience a question first. And, uh, and that is, um, how many of you have written a, a view in Ember before? And a component? So. Similar, similar group raising their hands. I think a few more on the component side. Um, okay, well that's good to know for, for the, for the uh, panel as well for, as myself. Uh, can we just go kind of, let's go left to right or Alex starting with you? Okay, um, so hi, um, my name's Alex Speller. I'm currently lead developer at a company called Digital Science, which is a sister company of Nature Publishing Group trying to figure out uh, what uh, will happen in the science publishing world. Um, over the next, the upcoming decade, um, and I'm truly going to do, go and work on a startup myself. Cool. Uh, my name is Christopher Gammy. I'm working on my own startup, which is uh, something called Dance Cloud, um, which is a kind of event management and ticketing system for dance organisers. Um, so that's currently in a, a kind of pri a private pilot at the moment for a few selected organisers. Um, so that's what I'm working on at the moment. And I'm James Croft. I work at a company called Minified. Um, we build web products um, for clients and have some of our own products ourselves um, that we'll be releasing soon. Great. Okay. Uh, so I thought maybe we'd start with a, a very quick history. Um, as I'm sure all of you know, Ember is an MVC framework for the front end. The C doesn't stand for component, it stands for controller. Um, it wasn't that long ago that uh, views, this conversation wouldn't have happened because we weren't, there weren't components. I think it was around, was it August, September of last year? Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere in that sort of time frame that components came around. And I think the, the question of which one should I use has been asked ever since. Um, we're going to not try to aim for a concrete answer, but uh, hopefully have a good discussion about it. The, uh, in terms of the overall history, I think that the, the motivation in some part was for, for uh, components was to line up with the web initiative of web components. Uh, what I'd ask the panel though is, do one of you want to just take a stab at talking any, any more about either the Ember part of the history or how that alignment with web components uh, exists? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I, I, okay, fine. Um, so, I mean, first off, um, it, one thing that's quite um, that's probably relevant to mention is that components are a subclass of view. So in Ember, a component is a subclass of the view, and they are very uh, very similar in a lot of ways. And I'm sure we'll, we'll get into that a bit yeah. more in the future. But um, in terms of web components, um, so I, I know that Yehuda Katz is um, part of TC39 and is working, um, working to uh, improve standards for the future and web components is one of the things that is hopefully coming in the future to improve uh, building stuff on the web and improve building interactive web applications um, and I think that that's something that's going to be um, that's going to be really useful. Web components. Can I interrupt yeah, for a second? Sure. You mentioned TC39. Is that web components? Is that the same? Um, I so I I believe and I'm not entirely clear on this. Okay. I might be completely wrong, but I believe that, that uh, that's part um a standard body that's um, web components is one of the things that they're. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. But I might be completely wrong on that. Um, I know that 
by the, by the way, just for, for the audience, uh, what I'm doing here is entirely unfair. What, what, sh what I should have done is I should have let these guys know what questions I was going to ask. <laughs> uh, that's the way it's normally done, but these guys are, you know, so, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Um, so, I mean, anyway, web, probably the best way to describe web components is um, a, a way to abstract the DOM from reusable components. So, uh, uh, a good example that's given is um, a comment component where you would have you effectively make a new HTML tag that would be a comment tag. Um, and there are some naming conventions that are in Ember components have to have a dash in the name. Um, and I believe in the web components, but they have to start with an X dash to let people know that they're an extension. Um, and the idea is that you have some DOM in the component that is not visible in the DOM inspector um, and is not visible when working with that component in. Uh, in the DOM and in JavaScript, um, and it basically lets you abstract functionality in a reusable way um, and in a way that's consistent and in a way that doesn't, you, you know, is not the kind of basically JavaScript jQuery mess that's very, you know, mm. the way that you do things at the moment. If you, another example is like a calendar component. If you look at jQuery UI, um, that has a calendar component, and you know, when you inspect that in the the DOM inspector in the debug tools, um, what you get is a load of table tags, and you, you know you, you're seeing like this structure of this component. And when you compare that, for example, to um, input type equals date, if you get a calendar component um, in HTML5 input, you, you literally see input type equals date. You don't see how that component is built, even though in WebKit that would actually be built probably with HTML internally. Um, some kind of I guess that may be an intro to, to web, the web components idea outside of Ember. Okay, well that's, that's very helpful. Do you guys want to add anything else or is that...? No, I, don't, I, mean, I definitely think about it as just creating my own kind of a DOM element, effect of my DOM tag. So mm -hmm. if, if I've got something that I think oh, I could use this in any other scenario in any other application, um, or I might use it a lot of times in different locations across my application, then to me it just kind of it, it's quite a clean way of abstracting it to think think of it just as its own effectively a DOM tag that I've created um, and the other component kind of gives you the ability to do that so, so that's kind of how I think about it. Yeah, I, I think the specs actually for web components like encompasses like five different five different parts that make up web components and the part I think Ember components are most common with um, the custom element custom element section, um, which yeah allows you to define these sort of, well, just like Alex described, like these ab abstractions that, that, that you then reference in your HTML. So um, this is probably me asking a dumb question, but so, you know, I remember, I think the original description that was either on the Ember website or it was kind of through some sort of Ember official channel. The, the big benefit was you could build these, these, these components. And I thought, OK. My first thought, that sounds great. I thought it was something like, I'd like, I'd like to do that. Um, but in fact, you know, when I look at a component, for, I mean, I do like syntactically, I like a, the way a component you know, looks on a, uh, a, a template. But it's not really that different, is it, uh, from just being able to say view and then doing the same thing? I mean, so you, you, if you want to create a comment, you could say view and then create your comment. Uh, I mean, the big, the big difference, I guess, is visibility and scope of uh, the, the variables. Is, yeah. is that right? I mean, the, the, for me, the, the biggest difference uh, is the scope of the variables. So all the scenarios that I'm using it in, I want to, um, I, want, I want the component to be self-contained, so that it doesn't matter what on my controller or my model or whatever the, the property is called. I can reuse that component by just passing it in, and I know that it's going to be contained. It's going to be dealt with contained within the, the component. Um, so that, that's kind of how I'm, I'm using it. Uh, wherever I've got something that I want to manipulate, particularly something on a, on a model um, yeah. that I, I want to just control in different scenarios, but I don't want to be, I want to be a little bit ag agnostic of what it's called on the model and things like that. That's where I use a component. So the example, the, the main one that I've got going is I've got a countdown timer that I put in different places across the application. Yeah. And on the models, it effectively all I do is pass in the relevant uh, in the component, I call it a relative date, so I pass in the date from the model from that, 
and wherever I use it, I know that it's being used in exactly the same way. So it just occurred to me, this is going to be a bit awkward, but like, yeah. even though I'm asking you questions, and I think it's very nice that you're looking at me, um, can you just pretend I'm not here and, and look out, <laughs> the, look out of the, the room? Because uh, I think that'll work better for most of the people here. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, Okay, and a very good answer. So, 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 so for you, there's a clear separation in terms of that. Yeah, just I mean, I generally I like to build in a separated way anyway. So I like to separate stuff out and have it, have things as isolated as possible, and I know where the interactions across uh, different things. Sorry, I forgot. I'm not meant to be looking at you. Um, so, <laughs> um, um, so yeah, so it just kind of that that kind of logic. Well, the moment I read the description of components, it was that it was that description. Yeah, cool. Uh, it, was that, it was that description that really sold it for me, so um, so that I could really isolate into the component and then reuse it as well in different places. So, okay. and James, do you have any sort of like rules of thumb that you use in terms of this is this out feels like a view to me. This feels like a controller. I'm sorry, okay. not controller, but <laughs> component. Yeah. Um, so, it, pretty much everywhere where I would in the template reference a view sort of historically reference a view using the sort of Ember view helper. Like now, just by default, I just, you define a component and um, reference it with the handlebars and the component component name. That's just sort of like the way that um, I do, yeah, do all of like the um, reusable bits of UI. I just always use these components. Now. The only place where I define it, like actually use a view is when um, using the root when I'm using the router and like um, the templates rendered automatically for me, with a, and it's looking up a view with that name, um, those are actually the only times where I define a view class anyway. Yeah, so you're starting to go into a, a question I was going to ask, and I'll ask all of you guys. Um, you can, James, you had already already answered in a way, but uh, let's imagine that you're going into battle. You've got your MacBook Air. You've got your favorite editor open, um, and this use case comes charging out of the woods. Um, and you need to tackle it with either a view or a component. Are you pretty much just going to go with one? Uh, I mean, so it sounds like for you, James, the answer is 99% of the time it's going to be a component for you. Um, uh, you. There's the kind of automatic stuff that you kind of feel obliged to go over the view route. But it, how do other people feel about that? Is that, is that also the way you'd approach it? Is, is mostly components these days? or? Uh, well, the app that I've written, um I don't think I've written any custom views in it at all. The only views I've, I've got in it are where I'm extending a, a view from the framework and customizing it. Um, but yeah, so basically, I think pretty much everything I've had to write, I've just gone for component. Because generally, I can see a case that I might use it again somewhere else in the application. Um, or I might use it in a different application. Plus, it just has that level of ab abstraction as well that I like. So. I, I, I found that, um, so I mean, I was working on a very big Ember app around the time the components were introduced um, and had a lot of, you know, obviously had a lot of views. Um, I think if you're doing custom DOM stuff, you will, you will end up having a lot more views than you would otherwise. So um, this app was um, full of D3 um, charts, and obviously D3 doesn't support Ember's data bindings um, natively, you kind of have to set observers and um, create the DOM in your view and then use the view to abstract around the events that D3 emits. So, I mean, if you're just doing HTML stuff, if you're just doing relatively basic web app stuff or even very complex web app stuff, um, you, you may not have much opportunity to you know, have much call to use mm. custom views. Um, but when you do, I've kind of found that components tend to enforce good practices that you can code with views anyway. So components enforce isolation from the surrounding scope. Um, and there's no reason you can't write views that are isolated from the surrounding scope, but they do, or views also have uh, the default context of the current controller. Um, so I think that whilst components don't really add a huge amount, um, they they do restrict you a bit and they restrict you to what can be considered good practices, isolation, reusability are, are good things. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's no, no, not good writing the same code twice and it's not good um, you know, hunting down obscure bugs because things are interdependent on uh, other things in your complex app. So 
I think that really a lot of the time components are are a good choice over views. I think that one one use case where where views still are very relevant is um, actually for building up complex components. So you can nest components one within the other. Um, and so let's say it will be an example of that. It, let's go back to the calendar widget, where you might have you know um, calendar component, and inside calendar component you'd have like a day component that's repeated. Mm -hmm. 30 times for, for each day um, and the problem with doing that with nested components is because they're all isolated from each other you would, let's say you're passing in a date to the, the top level component, you then have to pass that date down into each of the sub-components um, and you might argue that that's, you know, that's not, not, not too bad a thing but if it's something very complex you might end up you know, having so much um, state that you have to pass down this tree of subcomponents that it just gets to be a hassle. So um, one perfectly reasonable use case is just using views inside the, the top level component so that your, your component is a single um, object effectively that shares a single set of state uh, and that way you don't have to kind of have these huge tags that are passing like five different values down the tree into bottom layer of the DOM. I think that's probably one use case I can think of where views are a clear winner at the moment. And you know, obviously, where you have to use views as part of the end of conventions. So, um, I mentioned groups. That's obviously a group gets a view assigned, and you know, that's just how it works. So, yeah, I'm not sure it's there. I I don't actually see it as like a, a views versus components. Mm. Uh, decision really. Uh, um, Are you a pessimist in general? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I just see the components as an evolution of the uh, of the views. Just um, the, you know the uh, the custom elements from the um, from, from the spec are like clearly a good idea, and the way that things are headed, and this is like mm -hmm. the way that Ember is polyfilling now um, for for that spec that hasn't been sort of formalised yet, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, I, I see them as just like an, an evolution and like you should be, or, or people tend to be using components like um, where they would historically use sort of nested views like throughout their templates and things, they're referencing these components for the reusable bits and then Ember still using the, the views as part of the uh, rendering, like the root rendering process and, and that's where you use views. Makes sense. That's my okay. Um, this is just a kind of sniggly little question that I uh, kind of started to run into. I was using the container view, um, and what I don't know is, so the container view doesn't actually have any templates associated with it, and it's really used when you want to programmatically have it, a number of subviews underneath it. Um, Alex, when you were talking about the calendar widget, I was kind of thinking maybe in some ways that is, well, probably not the best example of that, but it's, um, is there a comparable uh, subclass on the uh, component side that you can use that, that allows for that containment relationship easily to be set up? I don't think so, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I don't think it would be that hard to to write. I mean, actually, I, I haven't looked at the, the source code of component for a while now, but um, I mean, last time I looked, it was, you know, less than 100 lines of code, probably uh, quite a few more. Components. I looked this morning, it's probably about the same. Right, yeah, right. So, so, I mean, it's component is a subclass, a direct subclass of Ember.view, and it, there's not much there. Yeah. It's, it's, there's quite a small amount of, of code there. So if you wanted to duplicate the functionality of collection of, uh, of container view in a component, um, I'm sure it wouldn't be too, too hard to do that. Okay. okay. Um, so this, I'm not sure if this is a dead-end question, because I think we've talked about it to some degree, but um, when you think about um, the two, well, actually, uh, before I do that, one thing we haven't talked about—I don't know if this is kind of the third, uh, the third wheel in a way—but um, what, what do you, how do you guys feel about um, handlebar uh, helpers? Where do, where do they fit in? Yeah, um, that's interesting actually, because I, I was thinking about that today. I was reading an article about about Ember components, and they were talking about how to define components and things and they were working through um, an example and then they got to a point where they wanted to format a date and at that point they um, went and defined a handlebars helper to format the date 
and I was thinking, well, you could just define a component for that, right? right? Um, it's got pretty much the same um, uh, like syntax in the template when you look at it. Um, a handlebar's helper, which you pass the date to, versus um, like the name of the Ember component that you would pass date equals something to, and like. It, it struck me as odd that in this sort of um, article where they were talking about um, where they're explaining components and the reusability of them and everything, that they then sort of jumped off and um, defined this handlebars helper. And I was wondering, like, that's just like another thing thrown into the mix is this helper. And I was wondering, like, what that gives you. Like, how, how small do you take your components? You know, something like formatting a date would. Obviously, for the author, it wasn't a valid use case to define a component, but it was a valid use case to define a helper. I mean, it, it stops you with your extra div wrapping the, um, in, you know, all, all your element mm -hmm. in the DOM. That might be the reason they went that way. But yeah, um, yeah. What are your thoughts on? Uh, well, I suppose I use handlebar helpers to format dates and things mm -hmm. like that. So I suppose for me, it's uh, the difference between my helpers and components is the components normally have a little bit more to them. So um, they don't have to. So I, you could format a date just with a component. Uh, but my components tend to either have, they might have a few computed properties, they might have action handlers on them, um, uh, they might have some logic and things like that in them. Um, which obviously that's starting to get very difficult to do that in a helper, where it's kind of a lot more obvious to put it into a component. Um, so I suppose, yeah, I suppose without thinking about it, I've kind of divided it on it. Do I need to do something extra with this rather than just sort of taking a, a value and just displaying, formatting it or yeah. something like that for the user? Yeah, yeah I think there's, there's definitely um, a lot of overlap there. Um, and I think that helpers might end up becoming um, you know, less and less used just because, so, uh, I mean, stepping back a little bit, I think the <coughs> controller in Ember is misnamed and I think that leads to a, a lot of confusion. I think the controllers in Ember should really be named presenters um, because that's really the role they fulfill. And why, why I mention that is that formatting a date, you know, that's perfectly valid to do that in a computed property on a controller. Um, you know, it's a presentation of of the data and that's what controllers are really, really good at. So, you know, why would you then need to do that in a helper when you could just have a, you know, a formatted date property? Um, so, I think that, um, so you heard it, Katz has a gist that I was reading in preparation for this and he was talking about the web component spec and, and you know, what, what power is kind of following that to some degree um, and I guess that you know there doesn't seem to be like any proposal for helpers in you know the future of the web it's kind of an ember specific thing but web components are intended to be a subclass of HTML element um, and I mean if you look at Polymer um, which I don't think most people may have heard of it's a, a Google framework that's like a polyfill of the future API that's proposed um, and it lets you kind of subclass HTML element um, and sorry that basically lets, lets you create custom elements which is what components let you, you do in Ember and the idea is that um, Polymer and Ember have, um, have aligned long-term goals but the medium term goals are not aligned um, in the sense that Ember wants to give a stable API at the moment um, that people can use and rely on and the Web Components API is not necessarily hugely stable at the moment, it's, it's in development and things might change. Um, you know, well, stable is obviously a relative term in the Ember world, but um, relatively stable let's say. Um, and therefore components um, are you know, are likely to stick around long term. Um, and I'm not saying helpers are probably ever likely to be removed from Ember, but the, the concept of kind of components is something that's probably going to be relatively stable long term, um, both in Ember and on the web in general. So that everything said makes a lot of sense to me. I, I guess one thing I would ask is, and it's kind of more of a philosophical question, is it, it, Ember is an opinionated framework. Um, you know, you can sort of see that 
these, these things come in for logical reasons over different periods of time. It's easier to be opinionated when you're young. Uh, you know, uh, actually, that's in life, actually, it's the other way around. Um, it's easy to be opinionated when you're old. Um, but the, um, for Ember, I think it will be harder to, you know, to rake out some of the old things. So maybe helpers being taken away. Should, should helpers be just be allowed to, should we allowed, be allowed to have our opinions around these three different options, or should they actually be simplified and one of them be taken out? Um, well, I, I don't know about you know the taking out of them because I'm I I was surprised today when I was looking at the um, em, Ember source and looking at um, I think that, well I was looking to see where components were used in the Ember source and I think they're used in the um, in the text fields um, there's an Ember text field component which used to be like uh, a text field view. Um, so, so that's the change to a component, and then there's the um, text area component, I think. And I think that's the two places where um, components are defined. But what I found interesting was that they then had um, handlebars helpers registered for input and text area. Mm. Um, so they're not using the component, um, like in, 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 your temp in your templates, you're not when you're not referencing uh, the Ember text field or text area com component, which, you know, you, that's one of the things that components give you. Like yeah. you, you define your component, then you get to reference it in your template yeah. using that. Um, they'd gone to the trouble of registering these helpers as well. So obviously they've done that for a reason. I don't know what that reason was. I just found, uh -huh. found it interesting that they, they've got the components, but yet they're also using the helpers. Well, I mean, and Anything that you put inside the moustaches that isn't a property access is a helper. So components are helpers, actually. Um, yeah. that, but I mean, that's kind of an implementation detail. When you say like my dash component, um, the reason that works is because a helper called my dash component has been registered based on the fact that a certain template with a certain name existed in your application when it booted. Um, so I mean, I, 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 it's very unlikely that helpers will ever disappear completely. Um, but I, I, you know, custom helpers, I mean, I, I think that you'll always have to be able to register them to, the, to extend them in interesting ways. But I don't think that, you know, I, I'm trying to think, I can't think of a use case really where you'd really need a helper and a computer property on a controller wouldn't do. Like maybe I just haven't thought of them, thought, thought of one, but I think, you know, in a lot of cases that makes sense. And it also just seems easier to, to, to do, like, you know, properties and um, dependent keys have very clear semantics. Um, and, you know, I've, I have made helpers in the past and they, you know, it's been unclear how, if they've been bound correctly, if they update at the right times and it's a bit fiddly. Um, okay. Uh, so I've, I've been uh, told that we're a little bit short on time. So I'm gonna ask, you know, it was always leave your best question for last. And this, this is a, a, really a doozy. Uh, but um, and then we're going to obviously have time for people to ask their own questions too. So, um, so the, uh, the a lot of the idea behind components is to be able to get reuse, whether that's reuse internally on a project, across projects internally within an organization, or maybe even externally across organizations. Um, and my question is, and this. I mean, let's try to be succinct about this because I think we could probably talk about this for a long time. We probably will at the bar. But you know, the is there any kind of best practice, anything that you found that works well for you in terms of being able to take these components in a project and, and then reuse those assets? Oh. <laughs> it could be my worst the, question. The, I, you know, the, the reusability across projects, or even across, so like just finding something that already exists on the internet and pulling it to projects is. It's a bit of the unanswered question, I think, at the moment, because there's all kinds of issues about sort of namespacing and things like that. If you're, of course, a component can have a template that can be using CSS in, tags in it, and are they namespaced so that you can, you know, you can isolate all those kind of things. Um, I think that that's going forward. That that's when components will become really useful when you can. Like, I need a I need a calendar date picker. I just go on, I find one that someone's already built forever and pull it into my project. Uh, that's when they'll become incredibly useful, but it's really unclear how that's actually going to work at the moment. So I think that could be a really killer feature for him. Yeah. 
if Ember had like a really good library of components yeah. that you could easily install, and I mean, Joe, I know you're working on uh, <laughs> uh, command line tools, and I don't know if you've considered this, but um, like I think I think that having um, you know having that as part of the default that comes with Ember yeah. could be really powerful. Just be, oh, it would just be brilliant. I mean, because like, there's no point. Lot, lots of Ember developers out there are all building a date picker. You know, there might be. You know, you need a couple, so you've got a bit of choice about implementation. But we don't all need to start kind of reinventing those wheels. So yeah, as you say, if it could be incorporated in command line tools and things like that for Ember, be incredibly powerful. I think the building blocks are there. I yeah. think that the, the building blocks are there, and components enforce the practices, the the development model that that's necessary for that to work. But what, what if we what if we take the so that that sounds like a great thing we're aiming for and, and hopefully Joe's going to solve that problem with us for us. Uh, but um, By but next month, uh, well yeah, uh, weeks, months, whatever. Uh, but the in in the shorter term, just for with internal projects, if you have more than one thing going at the same time, is there anything you've done internally to help leverage that date picker? You know, let's, um, date pickers are used everywhere. Let's maybe you used it in three different apps that are for the same client. Is that? Uh, I mean, uh, well, I've only I've, I can't really answer. I've only got one Ember app at the moment. I'm right. about in about six weeks' time. I'm going to start my second one. So okay. maybe ask me then. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. Um, I'm, I've only on a couple of occasions where you needed to use a component and copy and paste has been my friend. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's going to be my solution as well. When yeah. I get there, so. yeah. Um, yeah. They've, they've really just been like little trivial things that I've just needed to take okay. from one to the other. Yeah, I haven't found like that. That source yet of uh, packaged up components. Okay. Well, so um, I have no idea how this is going to work from a video standpoint, but we are now over to you guys. So, um, does anyone have a burning question? In the back. Um, okay, so the, the question was, um, because I was working on a big app around the time components came out, did I do a lot of refactoring and was that painful? Um, so I kind of stopped working on that big app not too long after this happened. Um, and I, I believe that my colleagues did do that refactoring and um, I don't know if it was painful or not. <laughs> um, there, there was some grumbling, but I it may not have been. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I think... Um, I think that some of the, the, the D3 stuff specifically was moved over to components, um, but I don't think it made it a, a huge amount of practical difference, um, just because I think we, we were kind of using views in the way that components are, uh, are being used at the moment, so we were using them by passing in all of the values, they weren't relying on you know, plucking values out of the, the outside controller state. So, um, I don't think it made practically that much difference, right. or was that hard? But I might be wrong. They might listen to this video and say it was really hard. So, but I guess when so it's the idea with components that when web components are standardised, you can see all the browsers, you can just flip a switch, and then you'll have your scoped CSS and everything. You know, so you can take your D three uh, graph component and put it anywhere in any. Um, so I mean I, I don't I don't think it will end up being that simple and I think that like you know by the time we get to the stage when web components are actually you know standardized and deployed in all of the browsers that we need to support even though no one apparently supports you know any IEs anymore um, you know I, I think that by the time even that's in you know the, the sensible browsers um, it, it, it's just you know Almost all the apps we develop today are probably going to be in maintenance mode. Like that's just uh, you know most apps don't last that long, um, and the API is going to be different. Like uh, Polymer is designed to polyfill the expected API, and that will literally be flicking a switch. Um, and Ember's components are explicitly designed to 
maintain a uh, you know to have a stable API even though the underlying API will change. So I don't really think that that's that realistic, unfortunately. Um, but I still think it's a good development model to be using right now. Um, I think it's helpful. What are the questions people have? I think you touched on it earlier when you, you said that, that, that Ember is opinionated and, if, and, and Ember's opinions are, are altered over time. If you started from when it was you know, 3.1.0, yeah. things changed fairly quickly. Up to 1.0 and then we are stuck. Components is probably one of the more major changes recently. And it's worth, even if you don't get any material benefit from changing from helpers to components or from blue to components, if components is the opinion du jour, then you should probably think about, about conforming to that. Mm -hmm. One of the difficulties I've found with working with Ember and Backbone, Ember pre 1.0 and Backbone before that was the opinions when you go and stack overflow or whatever, you know, understanding what's the current state, what you're supposed to be doing, how it's supposed to be built, differs. Backbone's a nightmare for that because it's just a thousand different ways to do it because it's not really a framework. Um, Ember's a problem because their opinions changed from 0.8.9 to 1.0. So, um, if that's, the, if that's what you're supposed to do, then you should probably do it to them. Yep. And, and, uh, and then hopefully it become, make your life easier. Um, but of course, if you're handing over, have you're handing over stuff to, uh, to, to, um, to other developers or probably the clients, then, you know, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we, um, my colleagues and I, in our studio, we share a studio with a guy who works for Crowdmark, who, I think that's the name of the company, an early Ember adopter. And he is basically doing graphing work for them using D3. But what they ask of him is that he package up the stuff he builds as Ember components. So he will he'll build something in pretty much strictly D3, knowing that things will be passed into it through this quite simple interface. Packs it up in a component and kind of sends it across the Atlantic so they can then deploy it in this big Ember app. And that's quite, a, quite an exciting use of them, I think. Okay. Would you use, just use Power as your package manager? I mean, that's it. Oh, so um, on that as well, we had a talk from Andy Appleton, Go Cardless, I think it was in mm. January. Really good talk, well worth looking up on video. And um, he talked about the way that they have modularized their, their application to UI, which is an Angular application. And so they've got a, um, a GitHub organization of all these repos and all the different widgets they use as Angular sort of bundles or directives or what, chunks of HTML template and not CSS though, I don't think. So mm. that's that's like again, even there, not quite there. And then those will come with a bower.json and that's how they install them. So they end up with a stack of stuff in the parent project bower.json. But even then, they still depend upon the parent project having the CSS that knows how to style these directives. And that's where the shadow domain comes out of That's why I see the biggest difference between Ember component and other and that components is the shadow domain is as a you don't have access to that and the scope CSS, yeah. Actually we saw a talk from the from uh, I forgot the guy's name, but for one of the Polymer developers, and they, they've gone to... Hadi Osmani. Osmani. yeah. Brilliant talk, absolutely amazing at the London JS conference, and um, they've doubled down on components to the point where if you want to make an Ajax request, you put an Ajax tag, X, X Ajax tag in your DOM, with the attributes bound up to the stuff you want to request, and that's how you interact with the what the browser can give you. So they've, they've gone to the everything is a tag end of the spectrum barely writing JavaScript at all. Okay, we are um, going to get kicked out soon, but I think if, people do, if there's one burning question left, we have time for it, and then we're going to the bar. Um, we don't have to have that one question, but we can go right to the bar. Uh, <laughs> can I ask a question? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, it's on the role of controllers. Um, so, um, in, in Ember, outside of 
components. You've got your templates, your um, views, your controllers, and your models. Um, and <coughs> your controller layer is this sort of decorator layer that you, um, that you mentioned. Now, as more and more of people's apps are moving into components, in, when you're in a component, you've got the data that's passed in, you've got the component instance, and you've got the template. And you don't have that uh, controller layer, like that um, uh, decorator layer. Like, do people think that that's something that's missing, or are they are they fine with that? Do they think that that's just some extra bulk on the ember side of things that isn't isn't necessarily there? It just seems that in the inside of components and outside of components, you've got two slightly different breakdowns of where the responsibilities are. Yeah, I mean, so, so I mean, it, it might be interesting to know like, as an implementation detail that um, components actually have a controller property which is set to the component itself. So the component object acts both as the view and the controller. Um, does that mean, I mean, what that might mean is that you end up with like, if you had a really complex component, you end up with all your event handling code abstracting of the DOM along with all your presentation code like smushed into a file. Um, and, it, it, you know, I, I think that you can handle that relatively easily with traditional OO techniques. So um, you can either use composition um, and have a, an object that manages your presentation or, you know, a certain part of your functionality, or you could use mix-ins, um, kind of like concerns in Active Record, where like you, you divide up your functionality into separate classes and separate files, but they end up all smushed into the same object. Um, but I think I think you're right. There is a, it, it, there is a difference between inside components and outside components, and um, it may you know I, I suspect that if components get really complex. If there's a lot of really complex components, it may become necessary to, to kind of add that back in. Um, but again, that's kind of differing from the web component spec um, as that's currently proposed. So I, I don't know if that's something that Ember would consider. You know, I think you can manage these code complexity problems um, without that, but yeah, it, it's an interesting question as things get more complex, if that's would, would rise as an issue or not. Okay, uh, I'll speak for myself. I thought this was great. Uh, you guys were awesome. Um, can we give a big hand for the three guys?